The poignant story of Katie and Eilish Holton, twins born conjoined at the shoulder in 1988 in Kildare, Ireland, captured the attention and hearts of people around the globe. Their birth was a medical marvel, but it also posed a significant emotional and ethical dilemma for their parents, Liam and Mary Holton. The couple was thrust into a challenging and heart-wrenching situation that many could not fathom. The decision to surgically separate their daughters, knowing that the procedure carried enormous risks and that one or both might not survive. Are you curious about their story and the ending they had to suffer? Don't take your eyes off the screen. Conjoined twins are a rare phenomenon, occurring in roughly one in every 200,000 live births, and the decision to separate them is always fraught with complexity. For Liam and Mary, the decision was not just about medical feasibility, but also about love, hope, and the future they envisioned for their children. As Katie and Eilish grew, it became increasingly clear that their conjoined state was not sustainable for their long-term health and well-being. The decision to proceed with separation surgery, though necessary, was made with full awareness of the risks involved, particularly for Katie, whose health was more precarious. The surgery, performed with the highest hopes and the best medical expertise available, was a painstaking and delicate procedure. Tragically, despite the skill and care of the medical team, Katie passed away just four days after the surgery. The loss of Katie was a devastating blow to the Holton family. Mary and Liam were consumed by grief, yet they also had to muster the strength to support Eilish, who survived the operation. Eilish, who lost not only her sister, but also a part of herself, literally and figuratively, was left to navigate a world that was drastically different from the one she had known. Despite the profound sorrow that marked this period of their lives, the Holtons found solace in the fact that Eilish had survived. As she grew, Eilish displayed a remarkable resilience that would inspire not only her family, but also countless others who followed her story. With only one leg, Eilish could have easily succumbed to feelings of despair or self-pity, but she chose a different path. Instead of being defined by her physical limitations, Eilish embraced life with an unyielding spirit. She became known for her agility and grace, moving with a confidence that belied her physical challenges. Her determination and zest for life won her the admiration of her peers, as well as the support and affection of well-wishers from around the world. Eilish's story is one of triumph over adversity a testament to the human spirit's ability to endure and overcome the most daunting challenges. In many ways, Eilish embodies the memory of her sister Katie, carrying her spirit in her heart as she navigates the complexities of life. Her courage and positivity are a tribute to the bond the sisters shared and to the love and sacrifices of her parents. For Mary and Liam, the decision to separate their daughters was one of the most difficult they would ever face. It was a decision made out of love, with the hope of giving both their daughters the best possible chance at life. In the years since Katie's passing, Mary has reflected on that decision countless times. When asked if she has any regrets, Mary remains steadfast in her conviction. People always ask, have you any regrets? She says, I don't. If I was presented with the same amount of information and the same situation, I would do exactly the same again. The arrival of the Holton twins on August 24, 1988, marked a moment of both profound uncertainty and profound joy for Liam and Mary. The twins were delivered by cesarean section, a method chosen to best manage the delicate situation that had unfolded during the preceding months. Just one day prior to their birth, the Holtons had been faced with the stark reality that there was a 99% chance their babies would be conjoined. With only 24 hours to reconcile this life-altering news, the couple grappled with a surreal and disorienting mix of emotions. Mary recalls the intense emotional whirlwind that preceded the birth. The knowledge of their conjoined state had been a heavy burden, yet she found herself in a state of suspended disbelief, 
unsure of the exact nature of their condition. We didn't know how joined they were or where they were joined, although based on their movement inside the womb, I knew they had a leg each, she reflects. This incomplete understanding only added to the sense of trepidation and anticipation they felt as they awaited the twins' arrival. When Katie and Eilish were finally born, their parents were met with a profound sense of relief. Despite the complexity of their situation, the newborns appeared so normal-looking, as Mary puts it. The initial apprehension was softened by this reassuring appearance, a small comfort in the midst of an overwhelming situation. Liam, who had just returned home from his business trip, immediately fell into the role of doting father, lifting their youngest child, three-year-old Maeve, onto his knee. His presence provided a stabilizing influence in the midst of the emotional storm that had enveloped the family. The twins were conjoined from the shoulders down, their bodies resembling an opened book, with their heads and shoulders tilted away from each other. They shared a pelvis, yet, in a stroke of fortunate anatomy, most of their major organs were separate, with the notable exception of their liver. This complex physical connection presented a challenging medical landscape, but also underscored the unique bond they shared. Liam's description of their conjoined state captures the delicate balance between their physical unity and individuality. From the very beginning, the Holton family's response was one of acceptance and unconditional love. We accepted them into the family from the first moment, Liam reflects. They were our children and that was the way it was. We bonded with them straight away. This immediate and unwavering acceptance was a cornerstone of their approach to the twin situation, providing a foundation of support and love that would be crucial in the months and years to come. Liam's first words upon seeing Katie and Eilish were a testament to the depth of his paternal pride. Despite the uncertainty and the challenges that lay ahead, his immediate reaction was one of admiration and love. Aren't they beautiful? He said to the doctor, a sentiment that conveyed his profound joy and the inherent beauty he saw in his daughters, despite their conjoined condition. Their initial response to the birth of Katie and Eilish, marked by an immediate and unwavering acceptance, proved to be a defining characteristic of their approach to the twins' condition and their family dynamics. Once they were home, Katie and Eilish were seamlessly integrated into the lively rhythm of family life. Their presence was embraced with the same affection and normalcy that characterized the Holtons' approach to parenting. The twins were enveloped in the warmth and chaos of a household bustling with activity surrounded by their three older sisters, Claire, 15, Therese, 14, and Mered, 12. These siblings eagerly took on the roles of caretakers and playmates, engaging with the twins in a manner that was both natural and enthusiastic. The Holton home, filled with the laughter and commotion of children, became a nurturing environment where Katie and Eilish could grow and thrive. Liam reflects on this period with a sense of fulfillment and pride. It was a great experience, he says. Despite the considerable effort and responsibility involved in caring for conjoined twins, he emphasizes that the joy and happiness the family experienced far outweighed the difficulties. It was a lot of work and responsibility caring for them, he acknowledges, but we've had a lot more happiness than sorrow. The only sorrow they faced was the heart-wrenching loss of Katie, which was a profound and deeply felt grief. The decision to expose the twins to a certain level of public attention was a deliberate and thoughtful one. Understanding that familiarity could ease the discomfort of their unique condition, the Holtons chose to engage with the media. They participated in newspaper interviews and made a notable appearance on Ireland's popular television program, The Late Late Show. The Holtons' courageous decision to embrace media attention had unforeseen but profound consequences, notably drawing the interest of British documentarist Mark Galloway. Galloway's resulting film, Katie and Eilish, 
stands as a heart-rending chronicle of the family's efforts to maintain a semblance of ordinary life while navigating their extraordinary circumstances. The documentary, spanning 12 months of intimate filming, evolved into a poignant exploration of the family's journey through an increasingly complex and emotionally charged situation. Initially, Galloway's project aimed to document the Holtons' daily lives, capturing how they balanced the demands of raising conjoined twins with the joys and challenges of family life. The film offered viewers a window into a household brimming with love and resilience, where Katie and Eilish were cherished and integrated seamlessly into the bustling rhythm of their siblings' lives. The focus of the documentary was intended to highlight the Holtons' determination to provide a nurturing and supportive environment for their daughters, despite the unique challenges they faced. However, as the months progressed, the documentary's focus began to shift dramatically. What had started as a portrait of family life became increasingly preoccupied with the monumental decision regarding the twins' surgical separation. Originally, medical consensus had suggested that separating Katie and Eilish was not feasible due to the severe risks and complexity of such a procedure. This initial belief casts a shadow over the family's hopes, leaving them to grapple with the constraints of their situation. As new developments in medical knowledge and techniques emerged, it became clear that separation surgery could indeed be attempted, with a relative chance of success. This revelation introduced a new layer of urgency and complexity to the Holton's decision-making process. The prospect of an operation that could potentially improve their daughter's quality of life presented a compelling but fraught opportunity. Mary and Liam found themselves in a moral and emotional quandary. The possibility of deferring the surgery until Katie and Eilish were older and could participate in the decision was fraught with ethical implications. Mary, in particular, felt that postponing the operation could be viewed as an act of cruelty, given the potential for prolonged suffering and the uncertainty surrounding the twins' future. The burden of this decision weighed heavily on them, compounded by the public scrutiny that came with the documentary's evolving focus. Despite the tragic outcome, Katie's eventual passing, the Holtons maintained a remarkable sense of acceptance and lack of regret. Their decision to proceed with the surgery, despite the risks and uncertainties, was driven by a deep sense of responsibility and commitment to their daughter's well-being. Mary's reflection on their decision encapsulates this mindset. I think that's probably one thing about such a huge decision, she says. You make it because it's the only one you can make. The aftermath of the separation surgery for Katie and Eilish was fraught with profound sorrow and intense emotional struggle. Just four days after the operation, Katie succumbed to two heart attacks in quick succession. Her death was a devastating blow, leaving the Holtons to grapple with a loss that was both sudden and shattering. The complexity of the surgery, combined with the emotional weight of the decision to proceed, culminated in this heartbreaking outcome. In the wake of Katie's death, Eilish faced her own harrowing journey. She spent 17 grueling days in intensive care, battling through a haze of pain and confusion. When she finally emerged from the fog of unconsciousness, the Eilish who confronted her parents was markedly different from the bright, lively child they had known. At just four years old, she was withdrawn, angry, and profoundly affected by the trauma of the surgery and the loss of her twin. For another 17 days, Eilish refused to speak to her parents, her silence a manifestation of her deep inner turmoil and shock. In a desperate attempt to connect with Eilish and alleviate her distress, Mary and Liam decided to bring Mered, Eilish's sister closest in age, from Ireland to London. The hope was that Mered's presence might offer some comfort and a sense of familiarity amid the chaos. We said to Eilish, Talk to Mered, tell her all your secrets, Mary recalls. This simple yet profound encouragement was a turning point for Eilish. Slowly she began to open up and show signs of recovery, 
the presence of her sister and the chance to share her thoughts and feelings marked the beginning of her gradual healing process. Seven years later, Eilish's memories of Katie have become somewhat blurred. Mary acknowledges that while Eilish retains fragments of memory about her twin, it's often difficult to discern whether these are genuine recollections or simply reflections of what she has been told. The process of coping with Katie's absence was complex and personal, unfolding in ways that were unique to Eilish's own emotional journey. One particularly poignant moment of this journey was an instance when Mary overheard Eilish speaking in the back seat of the car. Mary asked her daughter who she was talking to, and Eilish responded nonchalantly. Oh, it's Katie. She's telling me she's doing such and such a thing. This unexpected revelation provided a sense of comfort to Mary and Liam. The idea that Katie was still present in some form, communicating with Eilish in her own way, offered a soothing balm to their grief. As parents, obviously, we were upset about losing Katie, Mary reflects, but this had a calming influence on us, to think that she's out there somewhere, that she's probably not very far away from us, and that they could communicate in whatever way. In the years following the surgery and the loss of Katie, Eilish's journey has been marked by a profound and intriguing transformation. Initially, the separation surgery left Eilish grappling with a profound sense of loss and disorientation. But over time, she began to exhibit some of the personality traits that had been distinctive of her twin. Katie in life had been the more outgoing and boisterous of the two. She was known for her lively spirit and vibrant energy, traits that contrasted with Eilish's more introspective and thoughtful nature. However, after the surgery, something remarkable began to happen. Eilish started to exhibit behaviors and characteristics reminiscent of Katie's more exuberant personality. It was a bit uncanny, Mary observes, noting how soon after the surgery, Eilish began engaging in some of the fun activities that Katie might have enjoyed. Mary has her own theory about this transformation. She suggests that Katie's outgoing traits might have been lying dormant within Eilish all along. Just because she was quieter doesn't mean she didn't have the same abilities, Mary speculates. It's just that she was never challenged. In other words, the surgery and the subsequent changes might have unlocked latent aspects of Eilish's personality, allowing her to embrace and express parts of herself that had previously been overshadowed. Seven years after the surgery, Eilish embodies a blend of both her own intrinsic qualities and those she seems to have inherited or adopted from Katie. Her personality is a compelling mix of introspective depth and newfound vivacity. Liam describes Eilish with admiration, noting that she possesses characteristics that transcend the physical limitations imposed by her body. Eilish seems to have things, characteristics in her makeup, her personality, and her spirit that seem to override the physical inadequacies of her body he says. Her remarkable determination and self-belief stand out as defining aspects of her character, qualities that have enabled her to navigate life with both resilience and grace. In school, Eilish is known for her dignified presence and strong character. Her peers respect her, and she handles herself with a sense of poise that belies her years. Liam recounts an incident where a boy who had teased Eilish faced consequences for his actions, reinforcing the respect and protective environment surrounding her. One boy did tease her, and I believe he got the crutch taken to him. He never did it again, Liam shares, highlighting the respect Eilish commands and the supportive community around her. Eilish's journey towards increased mobility and confidence owes much to a fortuitous encounter with Kevin Carroll, an Irish-American prosthetist whose involvement proved pivotal in her life. Carroll, the son of an Irish emigrant from County Wexford, had established his career in Oklahoma City, working for the Sabolic Prosthetic Research Center, now known as Novacare, Inc. His path crossed with the Holton story in an almost serendipitous manner. The connection began when Carol, by sheer chance, came across the documentary Katie and Eilish. 
The film had been aired on February 20th in the United States, and Carroll had initially intended to record a different program. However, his young daughter inadvertently switched the channel, resulting in the recording of the documentary instead. Upon discovering the error, Carroll decided to watch the program, a decision that would have a significant impact on Eilish's life. At the time Carroll saw the documentary, Eilish had already been fitted with her first prosthetic leg. This initial prosthetic limb, unfortunately, proved to be more of a hindrance than a help. It was heavy, awkward, and cumbersome, creating more challenges for Eilish than it alleviated. While she could move around with relative ease at home, her mobility outside was severely restricted by the unwieldy artificial limb. The prosthetic was not only painful, but also impeding her progress and limiting her freedom. Recognizing the difficulties Eilish faced, Carol reached out to the Holtons with an offer of assistance. His initial proposal included providing a prototype of a lightweight prosthetic limb designed to be more functional and comfortable. However, the Holtons, initially skeptical, declined the offer. They were uncertain about the new technology and cautious about accepting help from a stranger. Carol, undeterred by the initial rejection, continued to advocate for Eilish's needs. His persistence and dedication were evident when he made a personal visit to the Holtons during his next trip to Ireland. Equipped with the prototype lightweight prosthetic, Carol demonstrated his commitment and belief in the potential benefits of the new limb. His visit was not just a gesture of goodwill, but a tangible effort to improve Eilish's quality of life. During this visit, Carol proposed a bold plan. If he could bring Eilish to Oklahoma, he would ensure that she would return home walking confidently with the new prosthetic. The idea of traveling to a different country for specialized prosthetic care was a daunting one, but the promise of a significant improvement in Eilish's mobility offered hope. Displaying their characteristic resolve and tenacity, Mary and Liam Holton made a bold move to turn their family's story into an opportunity for both personal growth and public awareness. They reached out to filmmaker Mark Galloway, proposing that he document their journey if Yorkshire Television could finance the necessary trip to the United States. Galloway, eager to capture the unfolding narrative, enthusiastically accepted the offer. This arrangement not only provided a platform for the Holtons to share their story, but also afforded the entire family a holiday in America, a welcome reprieve, and a chance to experience a new part of the world. The timing of the trip was serendipitous. Eilish, having left school at the beginning of that summer, was able to embark on this journey before returning to school in the autumn with newfound independence and confidence. The improvements in her mobility, thanks to the new lightweight prosthetic leg provided by Kevin Carroll, were transformative. The trip was more than just a vacation. It was a testament to the strides Eilish had made in her journey toward increased freedom and mobility. The impact of the documentary, Katie and Eilish, was profound and far-reaching. Its first screening coincided with Eilish's release from Great Ormond Street Hospital, marking a significant milestone in her recovery. The effect of the film on the public and on the Holtons was immediate and overwhelming. Mary and Liam recall a particularly vivid experience. We went up Oxford Street to buy some little gifts for the nurses, and it was unreal. I think the documentary had gone out two nights before that, and we were mobbed. Oxford Street is only a few minutes from Great Ormond Street, but it took us hours to get back there. The attention they received was a testament to the documentary's emotional impact and the deep connection it had fostered between the Holtons and the wider public. The level of recognition and the detail with which people remembered the documentary was astonishing to them. The Holtons' ability to forge lasting relationships through their journey is a testament to their warmth and the genuine impact they have made on those they encounter. Among those who have remained close friends are individuals who played pivotal roles in their story. For instance, a nurse from Great Ormond Street Hospital, who had cared for the twins before their separation, maintained a special bond with the family. This enduring connection was celebrated when she invited Eilish to be a flower girl at her wedding. 
a touching gesture that highlighted the deep personal relationships formed during their time at the hospital. Mark Galloway, the filmmaker who initially captured their story, continued to be a part of their lives. He attended Eilish's 10th birthday party, not as a documentarian, but as a friend, demonstrating the personal connection that had developed beyond the scope of the camera. Similarly, Kevin Carroll, the prosthetist who had played a crucial role in improving Eilish's mobility, made it a point to visit the Holtons every time he was in the U.S., maintaining the bond forged through his professional and personal commitment to their well-being. The Holton's network of relationships extends beyond these key figures to include professionals, families of other conjoined twins, and casual acquaintances who have become intimately involved in their lives. The enduring connections and friendships that have emerged from their journey reflect not only the impact of their story, but also the universal themes of compassion, support, and shared human experience. Eilish turned 11 this past August a milestone that marks both her journey and the evolution of her life since the dramatic events of her early years. Despite her tender age, Eilish has approached her circumstances with a remarkable blend of resignation, dignity, and thoughtful acceptance. This resilience is evident in the way she navigates her daily life and the decisions surrounding her future. From the moment she returned home after the separation surgery, Eilish has exhibited a commendable attitude. According to her mother, Mary, from the time she came home, I wouldn't say I've ever felt any depression in her. Eilish has actively participated in decisions about her own life, demonstrating a clear sense of agency. Clear Mary emphasizes that Eilish is the sole arbiter of her limits and choices, asserting she is the only one allowed to set boundaries on what she can and can't do. This autonomy reflects not only her strength of character, but also the supportive environment fostered by her family. In the past year, Eilish's health has been stable, a welcome relief after a challenging period. The previous 12 months had been fraught with medical concerns, including an operation to remove a cyst that posed a risk to her heart. Fortunately, the cyst proved to be benign, and the surgery, while painful, was relatively straightforward. Eilish's recovery was protracted, underscoring the physical and emotional toll of her medical journey. Currently, Eilish faces another decision regarding her arm, which was joined to Katie's side. The arm is set at a right angle at the elbow, and Eilish has thus far resisted any discussions about having it reset. Her refusal to consider this option highlights her determination to maintain control over her own body and decisions, even in the face of ongoing challenges. Looking ahead, Eilish's future is filled with the same uncertainties that confront any 11-year-old, albeit with added complexities. The fundamental question remains, what will she do when she grows up? Mary acknowledges the practical limitations Eilish might face, noting, she's not going to be able to stand in a shop all day. However, Eilish is equipped with a range of assets that promise to support her future endeavors. She has a computer provided by the Department of Education, her health is generally good, and she demonstrates high intelligence and inner strength. The teenage years, often marked by brooding and insecurity, may pose new challenges for Eilish. Yet her father, Liam, is confident in her ability to face these challenges with bravery. She's got guts, he asserts, adding that as long as Eilish retains her courage, he is less concerned about what she might lack. This perspective underscores the family's belief in Eilish's innate qualities and her ability to navigate life's hurdles. The impression the Holtons leave on those who encounter them is striking. A taxi driver who had dropped off the user shared his own observations. He recognized Mary and Eilish from the television and remarked on the level of normality in that family that he found enviable. His comment reflects a broader sentiment that the Holtons, despite their unique challenges, exemplify the essence of familial love and loyalty. Their story, marked by resilience and a deep commitment to each other, underscores that these qualities are the true foundations of what many consider normality in family life. What do you think about Katie and Eilish's story? 
Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.